Hey guys, and how's it going? About two weeks ago, I went to an estate sale that uh, a woman's husband had passed prior, uh, about 11 years prior to the having the sale, and she's uh, going to be selling the house and was getting rid of all the power equipment that was in the garage. I grabbed four pieces. This is one of them. It is a DR Field and brush mower. Uh, it has been sitting since uh, he passed in 2009, so the latest it's been is uh, 11 years ago, or the earliest it's been, it's been 11 years ago. Looks like it was serviced in 07 the last time. I know nothing about them, I have no history on any of them, there was nobody to ask, so I bought all the different pieces uh, pretty much as is, and we are going to wing it whether they are good or not. I would suspect that there should not be too many issues, but you never know. So I uh, paid accordingly. Uh, those four pieces, there was a mower, a uh, John Deere tractor, which is probably the nicest piece. This piece right here, the DR field and brush mower, and a zero turn. 500 for this, 400 for the zero turn, 750 for the tractor, and 150 for the mower. We'll see how far we get along. We may do individual videos, or we may uh, try to bunch a couple of them up if they run decent and come back to life. Had a couple of blades that were sitting there that looked like they were sharpened then just not put back on that were laying on the side. I do see it looks like it has leaked a bunch of oil. I don't know how it's showing up in the light right here, but it's all kind of wet on the back side. And even where I parked it over in the corner, it had a couple of drips on the floor. So I suspect that possibly we have a leak all around here. It might be just a little quick fill or a little quick drain that is leaking, but you can see all that being wet all up inside there being wet. Whether it had gas in it when it was put away could also be an issue and it looks like it does. So we may have some carb issues. And the battery is junk, of course, because it's been sitting again 11 years in an unheated garage. So that has gone kapooey. That was the only thing I was waiting on to start working on the videos. So I ordered a new one. It was 35 bucks on Amazon and it came in. Then, um, the woman stopped, she had my address, she was trying to find me some manuals for the machines. She stopped by and said there was a new one in the box that he had gotten, whether that's any good or not, I do not know. But a new one showed up in the box, that is that one right there. So I have two, then there was the one I ordered, and then a YouTuber uh, donated one also. So I now have three batteries that are odd size for this machine. <laughs> that worked out good, and I thank them for uh, hooking me up with that stuff. What do you say we get started, we see if this thing will come back to life and operate like it should, and if not, we'll make it come back to life and operate like it should. We can just set up in the stand and let's start wrenching. I guess we'll start to see if there's any oil left in it. Yeah, I couldn't even pull it over because it doesn't have a pull start. Well, it still looks decent. Yeah, it's got oil in it. The oil smells like gas. So the reason why that has oil in it, because the oil <laughs> is half gas. Generally when that happens, it means that the float stuck or got corroded in the carburetor. The carburetor then allows the fuel to just go right through it and it fills up the bottom of the engine and runs past the rings into the uh, crankcase. So that's our first issue. Uh, I kind of want to just shove a screwdriver or something in there, see if we can just kind of make sure that the motor still turns. Let's go do that. And hopefully. I'm good. It feels kind of tight though. That's got a lot of drag on it. More than It might have a brake. That might be what's going on. Kind of like a lawnmower. But it does turn. That's a good sign. Let's go pop the air cleaner off. Take a look at that bowl of the carb. See if we uh, need to soak that carb. And we can do that while we're working on other stuff. Mice come running out of it. That's pretty good. Smell bad. Let's. We got two, three, four screws. We get this plastic cover out of our way. Curbitator. So we get the nut off the bottom of the bowl. We'll take a quick peek. See what it looks like inside. A little bit of a stretch. This thing's 
Ooh. Longer than a regular lawnmower. Ugh. What do you think we're gonna get? I'm gonna say brown, not white. I'm gonna go with brown cruddies. Mm. Yeah. Rust. Definitely needed to come apart. Let's. We should probably take that whole thing right off of there and soak it. What we got to do. I don't. There's linkage on, you can't see it, there's a choke and a throttle on this side. I'm going to take a better peek, see if we can get that without having to take the plastic cover off. If not, we'll dig. How about we trade spots? I'll zoom me in a little bit. It's using a fuel pump, a little pulse pump. That might have an issue too, again, they don't like sitting with fuel in them. The diaphragms go back. Let's see. We can snake those linkages out of there. That one's off. Sometimes you get it, if you get it right off, then you can work the linkage. Wiggle it. Yeah. Should be a little spring on there too. I've seen a lot worse. Let's go bring it over on the bench. Yeah, so we get that float out. I think my punch might be a little too big. <laughs> see if we can uh, work it the rest of the way with some pliers. It's where you fling it across the room. It doesn't look like it didn't amount much damage to the carb itself. Just a little bit of corrosion that was down inside it. That screwdriver is not going to work. Come on, crack. Don't goo out on me. I think that's what's happening. We got her. Let's see if we pop that emulsion tube out of it. That may or may not come out. There it goes. Moving. Sometimes you can just give her a, a who's your daddy. There it goes. What that allows you is to get to all those ports, which do not look terrible. This wouldn't have run, but I'd like to get it all cleaned out. Wouldn't have run just because of the fact of all the rust that was sitting in the bottom of the bowl. Fuel is drawn up essentially right about about an eighth inch up in the air actually. It's right there and right in the center. Is uh, drawn up through there and they have a tendency as soon as you run, if it, even if it does run a little bit, this little bit of crap that's floating around inside here will be in mixed in with the fuel, goes into that hole and then the metering jet, the main jet, that hole right there will get blocked. So. Even if it ran, it would have ran for a minute or two and then crapped out. We should be able to get, uh, this may be an air fuel mix for the idle or main, I'm not sure. And it has a stop on it. There's a cam, I don't know if it shows up. There's a cam going around that. It only allows you to turn probably about 180 degrees from there to there. And as for emissions, they don't want you to run it crappy. 
Not sure how that one comes apart. I'm gonna go give that a tug and then we should be able to unthread that and this whole thing after I wash off the heavy crap that's on the outside of it, we'll put in the ultrasonic cleaning and I'll let that clean up a little bit and we'll go back to the machine. One and a quarter out, one quarter in. So we gotta turn it one and a quarter out and we're done. Start from there. And then she have a spring. Spring and washer. Oh, yeah, that's a little tiny jet. That stays in though. So I gave it a quick rinse. Probably should have hit it with an air gun too, wouldn't it hurt. Just to knock all the heavy crap off. And the reason is the uh, ultrasonic cleaner has what's called, everybody asks, I have Berryman's indoor gunk uh, carb dip. They come in one gallon cans and uh, it works a long time, but the more you contaminate it, the worse it gets. So you don't want to try to, you know, you try to knock off as much dirt as you can. And you want to keep the temperature from uh, getting carried away because uh, it is flammable so you don't want to like 100 degrees 100, 120 degrees something like that I'm gonna go set this for 30 minutes we're gonna let her buzz shake all the little heebie-jeebies loose from it got the rod knock we'll let that go do its thing while we work on other stuff that's what's inside it not an endorsement but people keep asking so that's what it is Let's go see what the gas tank has to offer. It is pretty empty. But there's like a sludgy, a bit of sludginess on the bottom. A little bit of a, I don't know what that is right there, that brown. So let's say it ran out, probably whatever was in it. I do see it has a, a shut off. And that is in whatever position that would be, straight down. I don't know if that's on or off or what. Let's get the oil out of it and see what that looks like. That has a weird valve on it. So you can get a hose over that, shove that in a pail, and it looks like a just a pet valve of some sort. Let's see. Or, or gas oil, I suspect gas oil to come out of it. Let's go. Nothing goes out. <laughs> that up a bit okay there we go yeah I would say it wasn't changed in a while and the fact that the it has gas in it even dilutes it even more I do not have an oil filter for it what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just pop the filter off. We'll let it drain out. We'll put it back in. It hasn't run with the filth, with the uh, gas oil mix in it, so I'm not afraid of the system, the pump part of it being contaminated. It's just going to be what is sitting in the oil pan of the engine. Yeah, definitely need some love. I've had a what was it? I, I just serviced. Oh, the uh, FJ Cruiser. I had a uh, bought an FJ Cruiser for my wife. I used one about uh, six, eight months ago, and it has a transmission shutter. And then with the paperwork came that uh, I guess a year prior they did a transmission uh, flush and filter change. Those transmissions do not have a dipstick up top. You got to do it from the bottom. Well, anyway, the uh, drain and the fill plug were never taken out of it, so. My uh, confidence in dealers doing what they said they're supposed to be doing and what they're actually doing. 
<laughs> so this says the oil was changed on a certain date. Here's that of the uh, the magic marker on the oil filter was changed on a certain date because it seems pretty dark. Even though it sat for a long period of time, generally there it's not that dirty for the amount of period that it ran. And the yard that it came from, I, I don't see this being used all that much. So I'm suspect on that. And it looks like the original oil. <laughs> Let's go let that purge out of there and uh, we'll go jump on something else. I thought there's any gas in there. It's on the tank, but whatever there is, we'll let it piss out. I want to change that filter out anyway. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to take an airline and blow the fuel out through it too. I'm gonna go uh, put an air gun in there, see if it blows back into the tank. If not, I'll open that valve. I'm not sure which way is which. And we'll make sure that's purged and we gotta go clean the inside of that tank out. Yeah, we should be able to hear a blow through up there. Yeah, it's clear. I don't wanna, I'm not gonna put it right up against that. I don't wanna blow the diaphragm out in the uh, fuel pump if it's still good. Liar. It's lying. Eh, no, no dirty, but there's no uh, signs of bad oil or Worn out plug, we'll clean them up, put them back in. Let's go pop that the belt drive off. I don't see any or smell any mouse piss, which is a good sign. And that garage is pretty sealed up. It was a, a decent garage, it wasn't like it was a barn. But you never know. Let's see where it goes running. That looks decent. Yeah, I think they make different attachments for the front of this. You could pull this pin right here, pull that collar in, and the whole front after you take the belt off, pretty much just comes out of the way. I think they might make a sickle bar, maybe a snowblower. I'm not sure. I need it for its intended purposes, which is taming a jungle. I have another one of these. Uh, the first version when it first came out it has like wagon wheels on it nowhere near as fancy as this works awesome I leave it at the cabin I have a camp in the woods but unfortunately you can't leave anything good at the cabin because it gets stolen like you couldn't leave this here well the other one would not start to spring and essentially the grass has not been cut yet so you can imagine <laughs> it's gonna need some and uh, maybe we'll bring that one back and uh, revive it too but uh, we'll give this one a shot over there Let's see if we get a urine sample. It's a mile long, huh? I'm gonna check upstairs. Possibly I have one. I don't think so though. Can't be that lucky. Oh, you can't change it later. We'll flush it again later judging by the dirtiness of this thought I was close said Kawasaki about the same thing with the ID these different size yeah we're just gonna go put that one right back on there because at the moment I have a choice I could wait till Monday How are we doing over here? We done? I think we're done. I 
filled it with oil. And I say, maybe we'll go put a jumper pack on it. We'll spin it. See how things sound. The plugs are still out of it, so it shouldn't fight us too much. I don't know if we have any safeties. The trans is in neutral. I don't know if it has anything that's going to stop it from spinning. But I guess we're going to go find out what we want now. We're going to go hot on there. I'm just using a jumper pack for now. And I'm going to try ground into a bolt. And it should, should spin. I'm going to turn the key to on. And throw a plug in it. Whatever I do with those. Let's go check for spark. See how that looks. You want to hold it? Put your tongue on that. <laughs> I do this dance every single time. Because you guys are watching me. I mean, you're typing right now to put something somewhere. <laughs> I'll tell you where to put it. You see, we're looking right up there. Let's see what we get. Nothing. We have no spark. What we got? Uh, throttle is up. It has operator pressure. It's got a. Let me show you. This might be an issue. What's going on with that? There's another wire that's hanging down. Hanging down below there. Go figure that out while we don't have spark. I'm going to look power right to the battery. And we'll turn it with the key to see if that makes a difference. It shouldn't. Everything I've ever dealt with before really hasn't been an issue. Never know. See if it works, the key works too. We got no spark. Okay, these are disconnected. I'm not going to connect them. I don't know. I would think open would be having spark. Let's go jump those across and see if it makes a difference. Nope. Issues. The machine's got issues too. All right, we gotta dig. I'm gonna go check the other side real quick. That's a plug in the other side. See what we get. All right, we got spark on this side. No spark on the other. We're gonna go double check one more time on the other side. And nothing on this side. I'm gonna go swap those plugs from side to side and see if it makes a difference if the problem moves. All right, swap the plugs. See if that makes any difference. No spark on this side. Someone was uh, complaining about the price I offered on the machines. Said that uh, I took advantage. <laughs> yeah. Well reason why you offer what you offer on stuff that doesn't run for reasons just like this because you don't know what you're going to get into how much money it's going to go cost you let's go pop that cover off click a quick look at that coil and see if there's anything we could see that uh, possibly is an issue pop screws out of there let's get that i think i got them all do i have to take those off too i'm gonna sneak it by That's answering my question now, isn't it? Maybe we can get by with taking just a couple. <laughs> Two separate coils. This is not the one we have an issue. Let's go take a peek on the other side. So generally the wire going to 
the coil is just a kill. You ground it out and it makes it so spark does not happen. We're gonna just go take that right off of there. Because there could be so there could be a you know, I don't suspect it because I would think that if uh, there was a wire ground issue, it would it would ground out both of them, not just one. Let's just go see with that off of there. Spark can return. Nope. We got nothing on that coil. And let's go spin that around. I want to go just take a quick look at the air gap, which looks pretty good. We have a bad coil, unfortunately. I right, threw the spark plug back in the other side. Let's go dump a little bit of gas in this side. Let's see if we'll fire one cylinder. I just want to listen to it. I'm going to listen, make sure I don't have any loud clacking noises. It sounds pretty good with the plugs out. Just that before I spend any more money on it, so I want to make sure that we have a, a viable candidate, let's say. All right, see if that'll go. It doesn't need a carburetor to run it. It should run, rev, and die. See what happens. That's a little clanky. Uh, it could be clutch or something that's in there. It's got oil. Oil's filled, and I spun it long enough to have oil pressure. Let's just double check real quick. Make sure we're good on the stick. It's in the marks. I'm gonna do that again and give it a quick listen. Guy probably kept putting, that's why I had so many blades. It was probably running on one cylinder for a long time. This is my guess, I'm just summarizing. If it was running on one cylinder, and uh, probably cutting like crap and bogging down, it kept buying new blades and sharpening blades. Let's just say yes, so. Something kind of, I think Howie's kind of known for having coil issues. There's a manufacturer's date on this too. It's a 4 of 03, so it's 17 years old. So it was into that again. Eh. <laughs> it doesn't give me a vote of confidence. I'll, let's put it that way. All right, we're going to go continue. We're going to put that car back together. We'll put that on, fill the fuel system. We can still chase the rest of it. And if it is, uh, it, if it is a uh, terminal, then it just is what it is. Yeah, let's go see how this stuff's doing. It always puts out, I think it's water that kind of goes to the top of the lid. I'm gonna go rinse the stuff with water. Water. And put it back together and we'll put that on there. That car back on there it's easy without the air cleaner in the way a couple things i did notice though is there was a couple of a couple of nuts floating around there's a piece of one right there and there's a whole one i saw somewhere else and there's a couple little bits and pieces down inside there so they did have a couple of critters and the other thing is too it's all the way at idle and it has a governor inside the engine but generally the throttle is not so pronounced like that 
it does not usually affect it with that much at an idle resistance. That, that's full throttle right there. That would be idle. Again, when it fires up, the, the governor kind of pushes back. I do not see anything a foul like anybody adjusted any linkages. Everything looks pretty normal. I do see a, a decent amount of oil, especially right around where the uh, governor shaft comes out of the engine. Again, this might be all indicative of stuff that I had. There's more shell right there. More indicative of some issues it may have had in its past and we're just not aware of it. We're finding it right now. There's more right there. But we are gonna go find out. I'm gonna go, I don't know if I wanna clean the fuel system out or we just maybe we'll fill that float ball up with uh yeah let's go back feed that float ball up we'll put a couple of nuts on the car we'll fire it up see what it does and give it a quick listen let it run just a little bit longer and have a better idea of maybe what's happening let's go put some fuel in that float we'll fill that and again somebody could have on one cylinder it's going to run like crap and i could see someone trying to i gotta get a piece of fuel line I got a piece of fuel line on there let's go some fuel in it. more than enough. It's up to this. It's dropping until it fills the float, it'll stop. Let's try it with no choke, see if it'll go. I also want to make sure that's going to stop. Because it did have an issue before where all the gas went into the intake and then down to the oil. <laughs> Kept going. All right, let's just give it. Anyway, if you're over res, I'll just turn the key off. Kind of hard to tell. It is idling now. Yeah, it's probably used up all the gas now. Yeah, it's a little clunky. I, it could be valve adjustment too, but it sounds like bottom endy, or it could be just part of the drivetrain. I haven't even looked underneath to see what we have. I uh, wish I had a coil that we could throw on there and you know button it up. I think the, one of the other pieces had a coil on it. Let's go take a quick peek and see if we could steal one off of the other Cowie motors. That one's a Kohler. Actually, I think this one was. Was this a Cowie or a Kohler? I don't remember. Gotta watch John Deere hoods. Come on. What do we got? Cowie. Look who has a coil for us. Well, I guess we're getting an early start on the John Deere video. It only has one nut in it. Looks pretty clean inside there. Let's go steal that coil out of there and uh, go try it in the other machine. Hopefully that has spark and then we can uh, move on with that one. Yeah, a little different styles. It may work. This is the one that was on it. I don't see any cracks or anything in it. So we want to go just like that. Yeah. Might have something at the house too that is the correct one. Anyway, we're going to move forward with uh, what we got. Let's see if it sparks for us. I like, I don't know, four pieces of paper stuffed in there and I tightened it down on the magnet. Let's get that out of the way. I was just trying to make an air gap. Just eyeball it real quick. It looks decent. All right, let's go. Let's see if we get spark. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good. Let's go put that in. Fire it up again with gas and see if it sounds any better. The gas I'm putting in there has a ton of two-stroke oil in it. It's like twenty to one. Or another project. So if it smokes, I'm not that concerned about the smoke. I 
you want to make sure that that fuel's right there going down. When the float fills, it should shut off. I may still have a problem with that yet too. It's holding. There we go. We're good. All right, let's go fire it up again. Take a quick listen. Hopefully our clanking goes away. It's like whatever's in the bottom end kind of clacking around drive wise whether there's a clutch or something down below seems to be what the noise was probably going on on the belt yeah i was concerned a little bit <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead just leave that coil on there and i'll order one but we can continue to move forward so let's go what do you want to do button it up we could probably uh put all the covers back on the engine part of it that looks decent oil's changed uh, carb seems to be set up. You have to still kind of fine-tune the idle. It didn't sound bad. I put it back where it was. That's that air fuel mix. I believe it's for idle, not main. And we can flush the fuel tank. I'm actually probably just going to take some carb cleaner and put it in there or maybe some gas and just wish it around. I'm going to take a rag and just kind of clean it up. There's a little bit of sludge that's on the bottom and throw a new fuel filter on it. But before I pull that fuel line off and make a mess out of the rest of it, let's just run it for a second, let it burn that off. And I want to screw with the safety wires on the other side and see if that shuts it off. The dead man that's over there? Oh, lost ground. Hold on. There we go. That's all gas oil that pushed out of the exhaust. Uh, that dead man probably does not work until you put it into drive, is my guess. So, it's got to drive for the mower deck to engage in the mower deck, and I have a feeling that's the only time when the dead man needed to be worked. I'll we'll screw with that a little bit later. Right, I'm going to go finish up what I was just talking about, turn the fan on here, air it out a little bit, and continue on. Sorry about the fan noise. Got to be able to breathe though. I just went and shoved a rag in there with brake clean. Soaked it, brake clean. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah. Give her a little more. Get it. Doctor's orders. I can do that for a little bit till I look in there and she looks pretty decent. And then we'll fill her up, put a fuel filter on it. We'll pull her up, let it run some gas out of the line. The purge to clean the line out and then we'll put a fuel filter on it. We'll put that together. We'll see if the fuel pump works. Put gas in it. Let's go see if we get some clean fuel coming out. There is a pet. Let's go open that up, see if we get anything. There we go. A little yellow for a second. So I wanted just to flush that line out a little, you know. It's not terrible, but that first little, that little, first little kajug had a little bit of crap in it. We're going to uh, put a fuel filter in it. We'll hook that up, turn that on, and we'll see if we get fuel coming out of the fuel pump. It might fire. Will we uh, idle, hopefully? Yeah. Go crank her over and see if we get some fuel coming out of the fuel pump. And we cleaned all that out too, you know, all the crap that was sitting. How does that look? It had some dirt in it, so we got rid of the crap that was in the fuel pump too, in the line. Then we buttoned up on top. Let's go flip her up in here a little. See what we 
we've got going on on the bottom side. See that blade looks different than the ones that came with it. Let me get you. Actually, let me grab a light and get you right out of the stand. We'll take a peek. Maybe those blades are not for that. We'll take a quick look at it. Oh, it looks pretty decent. The edges are good. Looking right there. That's where all the work is being done. Is right on that tippy corner. And that seems fine. Doesn't even need to sharpen. The edge is pretty razor. I don't see anything underneath on the deck needs to be addressed. I don't see any cracks anywhere. That looks pretty good. I don't know what we can see about the gearbox. Okay, can we even get to it? We should probably... Maybe we'll pop that belt off. We'll spin the pulleys to make sure they're not gravelly. Yeah, let's go do that. I think the chances are we can just walk that right off of there. And yeah, let me grab some pliers. Vice grips for every occasion. Let's see if we can... Off the belt. Walk it off. Probably has a quick release underneath, and I don't even know it. Alright, let's get. Hmm. So nothing touches it, and I just want to get a quick listen. A little bit of noise. that alone. Let's go see what the idler's like. Idler's quiet. It does have a grease vein on it, so I'm going to go put some grease down inside there. And uh, we'll just monitor that. That doesn't sound terrible. When you spin it around and it starts growling. What did I say? Grovelly before? When it's growling, it's when the bearings are no good. I think that would be just fine. And then I think up front, it's just going to be a, probably, a, I don't know if it's a, a mechanical PTO of some sort. We'll take a peek at that in a minute. I'm going to go put this back together, put some grease in there, and we'll pop that cover on. Take it. Come on now. There it goes. At the top. The sound effects help it work. What's your guess? I'm going to say 2 PSI. That's 10 on the gauge right there. <laughs> one? <laughs> Who guessed one? I'm going to put him about, about 10. Most tractors and all between 10 and 15. Snow blowers. That's 10 right there. I'm going to do the same on both sides. Yeah, I would definitely say that these are not the blades for that. They're about two inches, four inches altogether shorter on both sides. So I'm not quite with, sure what they're two. It might be for one of the other pieces of equipment, but it's not for this one. I spun around the bench so we can get a look what's going on under the back side. See a cable going down. Yeah, it looks like a mechanical clutch that you engage. Possibly has a brake on it too. So I see another belt going from here to that one with a gear reduction. One of those is going to be the gearbox. Yeah, so that's the gearbox for the wheels going down. It's the back one with a gear reduction. And that one. And then it looks like it just has a let, uh, mechanical PTO to engage and disengage the mower deck. That chain's pretty dry. That's going to use some, use some love. Not sure if that's a differential inside there. Probably. Or else it would just be a solid axle, right? What else we got? Probably a brake on the transmission for the wheels. Kind of like a tractor does. Yeah, right there. That wheel, that disc right there. We'll have a little brake pads, just the same as the riding mower does. And we've got a shift. It's kind of like a transmission that would be in a uh, 
little rear engine like Aaron's. I need to throw some lube on that. The gearbox is probably just gear oil and or just grease. I mean, I'm going to have anything. The spring look okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the engagement lever. The belt. I don't see any cracking on the belt. That must be a little bit of a fun one to change, huh? Front one looked okay. And we give it a little wash. I'm going to lube that belt. We'll throw a little bit on those bushings for the axle where they go through. Throw the battery in it. And maybe we'll give her a little bit of a bath with the pressure washer outside and clean her up before we get it nice and dirty. And right there, that switch. That looks like a neutral safety switch. I don't know if that's going to be for starting it. You won't start in gear. Or if uh, you let go of the dead man and it kind of knows that it's in gear. I'm not sure. I would guess under this cover is just the top of the chain coming off the uh, gearbox. Let's go find out. Might be a tensioner or something in there, not sure. Mice. Crap. Yeah. Maybe we can go check those guys out. That one is not turning very well. That one's gonna need a little bit of lube. That one's locked right up. Let's go pop. Let's go see if we can pop some of this assembly off of here. Them up. There it goes. I'm just gonna go wash those in the parts washer. And that chain definitely, definitely needs some lube. I'm out of chain lube. Oh, I do have fluid film. Give that a good dousing. I want to get up on the inside of it. You think overkill? <laughs> we'll make it just fine. Good for another thousand miles. Everything's looped, looks good. Let's go fire it up on a bench and I don't know, pop her in gear, see what happens. What can go wrong, right? <laughs> have a differential it would be hard to uh, make swings with it. Let's go for a reverse. Let's go pop it in gear and turn the mower deck on. Sounds pretty quiet. Yeah, I don't know what that last clanking is, whether it's something in the clutch brake assembly. It may have a decompression valve on the inside that, on the cam that goes clacking a little bit. I'm not going to adjust the valves. If I see it has an issue in the future, I will. For right now, I'm going to leave them alone. 
I see we're pretty good. I think uh, function test seems like it's all right. I think it, now it needs a bath. I'm gonna put the covers back on and uh, worship. How's that for a lawnmower, huh? It's got some uh, 
balls to it. <laughs> not to worry about hitting something and uh, spinning the flywheel key or taking out the blade. It's uh, a tank. It's heavier than the other one I have. I have one of the original ones. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, it definitely does what it's supposed to. That one being heavier, the plus is it has reverse. The other machine does not have reverse. It's got forward drive. But other than that, you have to back it out of trouble. Where this one, when you get it down in the water, you just hit it in reverse and climb back out again. I had to stop because uh, to the right, I don't know if you can see some stuff flying around or not, but I uh, disturbed a bee's nest when they picked up some logs and threw them over on the fireplace. So they're not happy. So that's why I am over here. <laughs> I did exactly what it should. It uh, is functioning quite well. I don't see any issues with it. I think it survived fine, other than just needing the good maintenance in that coil that went bad. It's definitely a tank. Yeah, it's my heck of a machine. Just gotta get a oil filter for it. Yeah, they're, they're buzzing. <laughs> We'll slowly kind of, if I run screaming like a girl, you know what. Let's go take the little one out that doesn't run. New school? Old school. This one's an animal too. It does everything that that one does. Just does not, I wouldn't say it probably looks the part as much. The wheels are much thinner. It's much lighter to move around. Only has a fo one forward gear. Manual pull start to tighten the belt. It actually takes the whole mower deck and slides it forward and back with this rod where the other one has a clutch on it. It is a, it drives both wheels, but it's not a lock differential. It'll actually click when you, when you roll it so you can do it one-handed. Yeah. So it'll drive both wheels, but it can still articulate. You don't have to uh, push when you're trying to make a turn. I would say this one's probably 1970 plus or minus I don't know if that's the original motor or not it's an eight horse I believe I think it's an eight and that needs to come back and get some love again I don't clean it up unfortunately this is uh, camp is off the beaten path if I leave this here it'll disappear this it doesn't look like it runs nobody seems to bother with it so uh, we'll get this one running back up and leave this one here for cutting the grass and this one's going home got homework to do all right guys with that i'm gonna go shut it down i want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me and having a little fun bring some yard sale finds back to life value of it it's hard to say again i i'm probably in it for a say 550 including the coil coil i already ordered i should be here in a few days we'll probably just put that in the other machine i don't see it being an issue seems like they all supersede each other as far as the part numbers i got just 96 degrees out I'm gonna go turn around off the end of that dock, kick out some lily pads, and go for a swim. <laughs> Till the next one, I'll see you. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.